Well, there's always a tension in religions between the dogmatic element and the spiritual element. Right. And, and conservatives, technically speaking, tend to tend to marshal themselves on the sides of the more rule-oriented and dogmatic elements of the religion, and liberals, roughly speaking, tend to um, marshal themselves more on the spiritual side. And that's because of the distinction that you were saying earlier about the, the, the behavior patterns of people that tend to be conservative Yeah, it's versus... conscientiousness versus openness, roughly speaking. And, I mean, the dogmatic structures are necessarily necessary. The dogma is necessary because it conserves the structure. But the spiritual aspect is necessary because it updates the structure. And there's always this tension, and there's a tension in people. It's like, you have to believe things or you couldn't exist, you couldn't act. You, you have to hold on to the dogmatic structure of your belief, but you have to be open for its update on a continual basis. And that's, well, that's basically what consciousness is for. That, seriously speaking, uh, consciousness is the thing that attends to the unknown and to the anomaly and integrates it with the structure. And there's meaning to be found in that, too. That's, that's to boldly go where no one has gone before, you know, in the, in the words of the Star Trek writers. And something that deeply appeals to young people when they watch that sort of thing. But so what the fundamentalists are doing is they're, they're trying to hold on to their tradition. And it's no bloody wonder, because if, if the tradition falls apart, you end up isolated and drowning in the ocean alone. But if the tradition gets too intense and restricted, well, then, then you're just clones in a prison. And, and, and that's these, that's these two two forms of hell, in, in a sense, they meet, you know, if, if they get extreme enough, they meet. The, the hell of absolute chaos and the hell of absolute order. And, and the conservatives tend towards the hell of absolute order, and the, and the left liberal types tend towards the hell of absolute chaos. There's some point in the middle. That's the line between yin and yang, by the way, because that's order and chaos. And the Taoists say, well, that's life, that's existence, order and chaos. And ca order is the place you are when what you do, do works. And chaos is where you are when what you do doesn't work. And no matter where you go, order and chaos exist. And your job is to be right on the border between those. And that's to live in Tao. That's to live in meaning. And that's that same place where all these things stack up. And so, well, and so with regards to religious tradition, on the one hand, you have to maintain the tradition. It's like maintaining the Constitution in the U.S. On the other hand, you have to be awake and alert because the tradition is a dead thing, right? It was composed by dead people in the dead past. It can't respond as flexibly as it should to the demands of the present. That's up to you. And you do that with your vision, with your capacity to see, and with your capacity to, to articulate. And forever, forever, really, the, the major deities that mankind have produced, Marduk for, for the Mesopotamians and Osiris or Hor, Horus for the Egyptians and and Christ for the Christians, and Buddha for the Buddhists. These have, these have been people who are noted for their vision, for their ability to watch and pay attention, because there's nothing more important than the ability to pay attention. Pay attention and speak the truth, your truth. And that's how you keep everything stacked up in order harmoniously. That's how you keep the balance between order and chaos. That's how you articulate your being. That's how you revivify the world. That's how you rescue your dead father from the bottom of the ocean. That's how you adopt your responsibility as a citizen. That's how you live a proper life. And a proper life, I know what a proper life is, because I've thought about this for a long time. Life is suffering, and suffering can make you resentful, murderous, and then genocidal if you take it far enough. So you need an antidote to suffering, and maybe, you know, you could think, well, I'll build walls of luxury around myself, and that'll protect me from the suffering. It's like, well, good luck with that, because that isn't going to work. And maybe you could build a delusion and live inside that, but that's going to fall apart. Well, what is there that helps you fight against suffering? That's easy. That's the truth. The truth is the antidote to suffering. And the reason for that is because the truth puts reality behind you so that you can face the reality that's coming straight at you without becoming weak and degenerating and becoming resentful and, and wishing for the destruction of being because that's the final hell. The final hell is your soul wishing for the destruction of everything because it's too painful and you're too bitter. And that happens to people all the time.